Dark has come to an end, and if you're like me, your brain has exploded from watching the latest season. So I'm the masochist and thought it would be fun to put some of the biggest events of the entire three seasons, starting from the early 1800s to mid-2000s. I was hesitant to call this a chronological timeline since technically some of the events that occur in the 2000s actually occur before events in the 1920s. That's where things start to get complicated. So to make things easy, we're just going to start from 1822 and work our way up, and I'll provide additional context for some of the more WTF moments. Just note, these are events I deem to be important, and for reasons of brevity, a lot is left out. So if you thought I should have added something, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. But before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe, and check out my Season 3 Ending Explain video, which will definitely help fill in some of the gaps. The furthest back we go is September 23rd, 1822. Gustav Tannhaus is with his son Leopold and teaches him about the possibility to bring back the dead. You see, Gustav here lost his wife and believes time travel may be the solution to bringing her back. This obsession will work its way to Leopold who, when he grows up, allows Jonas to use his shop to construct a time machine. For those with keen eyes, in episode 4 of season 3, you can even make out the year 1822 written on the wall of the future bunker, which is all the way in the year 2052 of the alternate timeline but we are just getting started. Fast forward to 1888, where Jonas and the teens from the end of season two have been transported after using the time apparatus just before the apocalypse. They will be stuck here for quite some time, and in September of this year, Leopold is killed by a man known as the Unknown, who we know to be Jonas and Marta's son. Leopold was on his way to send a telegram telling the world that time travel is possible. Two years later, Jonas and the teens are still still working on the time machine, but this is also where Silja has been sent back to all the way from the year 2053 by Adam. Silja and Bartosz will later fall in love, and in 1904 they give birth to a boy named Hanno. Hanno is an anagram for Noah. Unfortunately, six years later, Silja will die in childbirth while having Agnes. In 1911, Hannah is brought to Adam by Eve, causing him to later kill his own mother because she's not supposed to be in this time period and it might screw up his plan of cutting and destroying the knot. Around 1920 is when Aegon Tiedemann is born, and a year later, in June of 1921, young Noah and an older Bartosh work on the cave passage, but young Noah kills him at Adam's orders, because Bartosh has started to lose his faith in Adam's plan. At this point, Noah is fully brainwashed by Adam's plans and doesn't yet know that Bartosh is his father. And that kind of shit happens a lot in this show. Just wait till we get to the age. Two days later, on June 23rd, Jonas wakes up in a wheat field after having traveled through the God Particle from the year 2053. Here he meets young Noah and Agnes, and a day later he's taken to Adam, who he finds out is his older self. On the 27th, Noah attempts to kill Adam after finding out his real plan. He learned this after collecting the final pages of the Triketra book, which he got by killing Claudia in the future. When he tries to shoot Adam, the gun doesn't work, fate will not allow Adam to be killed here. Agnes takes the gun from Noah and ends up killing him, her own brother, because she so firmly believes in Adam's plan and wants to be a member of Sigmundus. Jumping all the way to 1942, we have the birth of Claudia Tiedemann and a year later Helga Doppler. In November of 1953, adult Helga has traveled from the 80s to dispose of the bodies of Eric Obendorf and Yassen, who were taken from the year 2019. This is also where Ulrich travels back in time and attempts to kill young Helga, believing that if he kills him, he'll never grow up to kidnap his missing son, Mikkel. At the same time, Bern Doppler holds an investors meeting for the future wind and nuclear plant, and a day later on November 11th, Ulrich is arrested by Egon on suspicion that he killed those two boys found in the sand pit. On the same date, old Claudia has traveled back in time to visit H.G. Tannhaus and give him the blueprints for the apparatus machine. Seven months later, in June of 1954, old Claudia Claudia will bury her time apparatus machine so that it can be dug up in 1987 by her younger self. She also visits her father Egon and apologizes to him. He of course thinks she's a nut job, but she wanted to apologize because in the future she'll end up killing him. Old Claudia also ends up giving Tannhaus his own book, which explains time theory, a book he hasn't yet written. This was a present given to Claudia in the 80s by Helga. Noah ends up killing Claudia to retrieve the missing notebook pages and finds out that 
that Charlotte is his daughter. Hannah arrives on June 26, having stolen middle-aged Jonah's time apparatus in the year 2020. Here she finds Ulrich in prison, but leaves him there after she finds out he's still in love with Katerina. Talk about Stone Cold. This is also where she begins her affair with Egon Tiedemann. Three months later, in September, she finds out she's pregnant with his baby, a baby which will eventually become Silja. This is also the time where the Unknown threatens to kill the mayor of Winden unless he grants the permit to build the nuclear plant. After finding out Aegon is cheating on her, Doris divorces him, and Hannah decides not to go through with an abortion. But we do see a young Helen Abers, Katerina's mother, go through with one. These operations are performed by Mrs. Obendorf, the mother of Jürgen Obendorf. It's pretty quiet from 1954 to 1970. In 1970, we see the births of Ulrich Nielsen and Katerina Albers. A year later, in August of 71, Regina Tiedemann is born, and in the origin world timeline, we have arguably the most important event of the entire series, the event that started everything. August 11th, 1971 is when H.G. Tannhaus's son and daughter-in-law are killed in a car accident, spurring him to build a time machine which will result in the splitting of the world into two realities. This is also the year Jonas and Marta travel to and successfully stop the crash from happening. 1972 sees the birth of Hannah Conwald, Jonas's mother, and two years later in 74, Tannhaus begins his work on the time machine in the bunker. It takes him 12 years, but Tannhaus successfully completes the machine, and on June 21st, 1986, he rips the world into two realities. On October 9th, 1986, Mads Nielsen, Ulrich's brother, goes missing. He was kidnapped by Helga. Next month, Mikkel arrives in this world having traveled from 2019. This is also where Claudia learns of the barrels of nuclear waste stashed in the Winden Caves. On November 7th, Mikkel and Hannah meet for the first time. They'll eventually marry and have Jonas. Jonas, coming from the year 2019, travels to 1986 and actually sees Mikkel but ends up not bringing him back to the present because if he did that, that would mean Jonas would never exist. On November 11th, a young Boris Newald, also known as Alexander Tiedemann, arrives in Winden on the run from police. He'll later get a job at the nuclear plant welding the door that connects the cave to the plant that contains all the toxic waste. He'll fall in love with Regina and later become the head of the plant. Jonas is captured by Noah and Helga and locked in the bunker where he's visited by his older self who plans to fix everything by activating the apparatus and closing the wormhole. This, as we find out, does not work and only ends up with Jonas being transported to the year 2052. 1987 sees the arrival of Peter Doppler in Winden, who will end up marrying Charlotte. Old Egon's investigation into the disappearance of Mads Nielsen leads him to to this psych ward where he eventually finds out that old Ulrich is the same person as teen Ulrich. After Egon brings him a picture of Mikkel who is alive in this year, Ulrich escapes from the psych ward where he's later caught by police at the exact same moment the teens from 2020 have transported there using Bartosh's time apparatus, an apparatus he got from Noah who he's working with. The next day Egon and Claudia get in a fight and Claudia accidentally ends up killing him when he's knocked over into the counter. Three months later in September of 1987, the Unknown kill old Bern Doppler to get access to the master key of the nuclear power plant. Katarina shows up here having gone through the passage at the end of season 2 and is in search of Ulrich and Mikkel. She winds up finding old Ulrich and vows to break him out of the psych ward. The only thing she needs is a key card, and who happens to have one? Her own mother who works at the ward. She holds her mother at knife point but ends up getting killed by her. That seems to be a theme in the show. In August of 1993, Regina and Alexander marry, and the next year so do Ulrich and Katerina. Nine years later, roughly around 2003, we have the births of Jonas, Marta, Bartosz, Magnus, and Francesca, with Mikkel being born in 08 and Elizabeth Doppler in 2011. June 20th is the day before adult Mikkel's suicide. Jonas kisses Marta at the lake, and Ulrich and Hannah kiss, perhaps starting their affair, which is a big plot point of season one. It's here we learn Mikkel's suicide was a sacrifice because if he doesn't kill himself, he can't set Jonas on the path that will eventually save everyone. The next day on June 21st, we get the first scene of episode one, season one, where Mikkel hangs himself. Hopping over to the alternate timeline on September 2nd, we see Regina Tiedemann has died. And back to the normal timeline, it's on October 22nd that Eric Obendorf, the first of the missing Winden children, is kidnapped by Helga. November 4th is the day young Mikkel disappears, having been transported to 1986. In the alternate timeline, on the same day, Jonas is 
taken here after being saved by Marta at the end of season two. It's on this date he also meets Eve, the counterpart to Adam, who is actually just old Marta. On the fifth, the stranger arrives in Winden, who we know is older Jonas. This is also when Alexander, now the head of the power plant, orders the barrels of toxic waste removed since the police may be investigating the caves as a result of the missing children. November 6th, the stranger marks Jonas's map. Jonas will use this marking to find the portal that eventually takes him to 86, where he'll find out that Mikkel is still alive and is his father. In the alternate timeline on this day, Jonas and alternate Marta make love, which will result in Marta becoming pregnant and later giving birth to the unknown. And shortly after this love fest, when Jonas brings Marta to Eve, he's shot by another version of Marta, but we'll get to how this comes about in a bit. Still in the alternate timeline, Ulrich attempts to kill adult Helga, but he himself is killed in the process. On November 8th, Regina Tiedemann is diagnosed with breast cancer, and two days later on the 10th, Ulrich finds the cave that will later take him to 1953 and his eventual attempted murder of young Helga. November 12th also happens to be the final episode of season one, where middle-aged Jonas ends up closing the wormhole in the cave. Seven months later in June of 2020, we get into many of the events of season two. Special Agent Clausen is assigned to Winden after no progress has been made on the missing children cases. Alexander Tiedemann, knowing the plant is about to be decommissioned, has the barrels of toxic waste buried and covered in concrete. Jonas tells Hannah is her son and takes her to 1987, where she sees Mikkel has been adopted by Enos. Claudia sees her grown-up daughter, Regina, dying of cancer, and Katarina finds out that Mikkel grew up in the 80s, and she begins her journey of trying to get to the 80s to save her son and husband. Five days into Clausen's investigation, he arrests Alexander for identity theft of his brother, who went missing in 1986. The next day, Jonas holds Marta at gunpoint and locks her in the bunker because he can't bear the thought of her dying in the pending apocalypse. But this doesn't really work because she later escapes when Peter and Elizabeth come into the bunker for safety. Clausen gets a search warrant to dig up the toxic waste, and Marta, who has gone back to younger Jonas, is shot by Adam. This date is where things get very very complicated, because three different events occur here that alter time in three different directions. If you've seen my ending explain video for season three, you'll know this particular moment is called a switch point, where cause and effect stop for a brief moment and things can be changed. One outcome we see is that Marta is shot, and alternate Marta comes in and saves Jonas. Outcome two is Marta is shot, but no one comes to save Jonas. And outcome three is Marta is shot, but a different Adam returns and takes Jonas to fulfill his destiny of stopping the car crash in 1971. This is also the date where Charlotte is transported into the future when she sees Elizabeth through the portal. Fast forward three months to September 22nd, 2020, where we're in full post-apocalypse mode. Claudia looks after her cancer-stricken daughter while Peter and Elizabeth search for Charlotte and Francesca. Two days later, Peter will die trying to save his daughter, paving the way for Noah to become an important figure in Elizabeth's life. We don't have an exact date for this, but somewhere around here we have the final scene of the series, which takes place in the origin timeline. This is Regina's dinner party where Hannah and Waller have a baby they decide to name Jonas. It's the world that occurs if Tannhaus never made his time machine. In 2021, Elizabeth and Noah dig out the passage in the Winden Caves. Two years later, Jonas and Claudia try to get the God Particle to work, but after several failed attempts, Jonas tries to kill himself, but is saved by Noah. He learns that even if he turns turns the gun on himself, fate won't allow him to die, because an older version of himself, Adam, is still alive. How could Adam still be alive in the future if Jonas killed himself in the past? It's one of Dark's many paradoxes. In 2040, Claudia kills the alternate version of herself in order to begin orchestrating her plan to end the knot for good. The next year, Elizabeth gives birth to baby Charlotte, who is later stolen by older Charlotte and Elizabeth, so she can be brought to 1971 and given to Tannhaus. This is all part of Adam's plan to ensure everything goes the way it's supposed to. In 2052 of the alternate timeline, Jonas and alternate Marta meet middle-aged Marta after Jonas decides to bring her to Eve in his search for answers. The next day, Bartosz, who was assigned with picking up Marta before she goes to save Jonas at the end of season two, brings her to Eve, who slashes her face as a reminder of which side she's on. That's when Eve shows Marta her son and instructs Marta to kill Jonas, because if she does doesn't, her child will die. That's why, way back in 2020, we had that scene where Marta kills 
Jonas. We're kind of coming full circle here. November 12th, 2052 is the year Jonas arrives in the future at the end of season one. And it isn't until seven months later in June of 2053 that he finds the God particle in the abandoned nuclear plant. Jonas finds out he needs fuel to stabilize it, but is caught in the dead zone and sentenced to death. Adult Elizabeth ends up shooting down the rope at the last minute, allowing Jonas to go back to the God particle where he successfully travels to 1921. In September of 2053, we learn that the Marta who saved Jonas at the end of season two and left middle-aged Jonas in 1888 is working with Adam, only to be betrayed by him and captured. He tells her that she's pregnant and inside her is the origin, which must be destroyed in order to end this endless cycle of pain and suffering. And now we have the furthest entry in the Dark Saga, September 25th, 2053. This is the day Adam's attempt at killing Marta is unsuccessful and he learns he's been tricked by Claudia, eventually joining her side to unite his younger self and Marta to save Tannhaus's family and avoid the splitting of the origin world in two. Wow, that was a lot. I know I couldn't get everything, but I hope this was a fun video for you guys and please make sure to like and subscribe as I come out with tons of theory and timeline videos. For more bad takes, follow me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.